So hand, foot, and mouth disease is a relatively common rash in children. It's caused by a virus. There are actually three viruses that can cause hand, foot, and mouth. One particular virus called Coxsackie A6 is the most common cause of hand, foot, and mouth. But it's characterized by this widespread rash on the hands, feet, and in and around the mouth. And kids with it, they feel sick. They often have a low-grade fever. They're cranky. They just don't feel like themselves. And that makes sense, right? Because it is a viral infection that their immune system is fighting. The sores on the hands and the feet with hand, foot, and mouth tend to not be painful, but the sores in the mouth can be very painful. I think the most discomfort kids get from hand, foot, and mouth is just the pain of having a virus. You just don't feel good. You feel achy. You might have a low-grade fever. Maybe you have a little bit of a headache. You just don't feel good. I think that's where most of the pain comes from. So the very interesting thing is that we used to not see hand, foot, and mouth in adults. Prior to maybe six or seven years ago, uh, hand, foot, and mouth was predominantly caused by two different viruses, Coxsackie A16 and Enter Enterovirus 71. And then six or seven years ago, Coxsackie A6 emerged as the primary cause of hand, foot, and mouth. And it's different in a couple ways. It tends to have pretty aggressive diaper area involvement. And a lot of kids will get nail shedding two to three months after having hand, foot, and mouth. The other way that Coxsackie A6 is different is that it can affect adults. There was even a pitcher for the New York Mets that had to go on the injured reserve list for 10 days because he got hand, foot, and mouth. So it is possible for adults to get it now. There's this process called onychomedesis that can occur after a hand, foot, and mouth infection. So basically what happens is your nails are growing perfectly normally, and then you get sick with hand, foot, and mouth. And your body decides, hey, we have a lot to deal with with this hand, foot, and mouth virus. We're temporarily going to stop our nails from growing. Then you get better and your nails start growing again, but there's a little bit of a break in between. As the nail grows out, the new nail gets kind of clumped up on the old nail and eventually the old nail sheds and the new nail grows in behind it. It's a process called onychomedesis. It's most commonly triggered by Coxsackie A6. It requires no treatment. Everything will improve just on its own. In my opinion, adults can hug and kiss their child that has hand, foot, and mouth. They don't feel good. They deserve to be cuddled and coddled. And so I think it's okay to support them in that way. Could an adult get it? Yeah, they could. But I think still it's important to, you know, be there for your kiddo when they don't feel good. Hand, foot, and mouth is, cont is most contagious the first week that you have it. It can take anywhere from 10 to 14 days for it to completely run its course, but the first week that you have it is the most contagious period. So you can even be contagious a day or two prior to the rash appearing, but that's hard to predict. You don't know you're about to get a rash. So by the time you know you have hand, foot, and mouth, the most important time you have to worry about being contagious is that first week of the rash. I would recommend doing somewhat of a quarantine for that week that you have hand, foot, and mouth uh, the first week of the rash. Uh, plus, you know, your child's not going to feel good anyway during that period of time. You're probably not going to be going out and doing play dates and things like that because your child is going to feel sick. Uh, but also just to protect other people, I would probably stay at home for the first week. So the interesting thing is that if a child has a history of eczema and then they get hand, foot, and mouth, the eczema and the virus merge to form a super rash called eczema coxsackium. So the eczema allows the virus to spread more easily and the virus triggers more eczema. So you get this super rash called eczema coxsackium and it tends to produce a much more uh, impressive rash, again, favoring arms, hands, legs, feet, and face. So you can tell it's hand, foot, and mouth, but it looks even more impressive than your regular hand, foot, and mouth. And that's why we named it eczema coxsackium. So kids with eczema that get hand, foot, and mouth, they're gonna have a tougher course of, of illness than kids who don't have eczema. For eczema coxsackium, we typically just focus on treating the eczema part of it. So we'll use some topical medicines that we use to treat the eczema, let the virus run its course, and let the child get better. I guess the worst thing you could do for hand, foot, and mouth would be to use something potentially abrasive on the skin. The skin is already rashy as a result of the virus, so you certainly wouldn't want to put anything on there that's going to intensify the potential for irritation. 
So we use everything soothing, things like Aquaphor or Vaseline, things that are soothing in an ointment base, nothing too fancy, um, just to avoid any further irritation. I probably, my personal opinion would be to steer clear of essential oils for the stores, for the sores, <laughs> um, because essential oils can have ingredients in it that your skin might not like. And then your skin is already inflamed due to this viral infection. And so it would be like putting gasoline on a burn. Your skin might not like it at all. And then it can intensify the discomfort that your child is feeling.